All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling a simple logo or text reveal design, and we're going to be using cycles this time. I've gotten a lot of requests for cycles, but before we get into that, let me shout out today's sponsor. Okay, so today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with tons and tons of classes covering from creative skills, entrepreneurial skills, just tons of stuff. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to all the classes. So you can join the classes and the communities and all the different types of stuff that is perfect for what you want to learn. Whether you're just curious about something or you want to fuel your creativity, like learning Blender, or you're trying to enhance your actual career, Skillshare is an awesome place for you to go and find all that stuff. For example, Steven Pearson, he has a really awesome tutorial on how to make a modern home, and there's so much more Blender stuff on Skillshare for you to look at. Skillshare is also really affordable compared to really pricey in-person teaching. This is less than $10 a month. Because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, if you hit the first link in the top line of the description, you can get two months free of Skillshare, and you can go check that out. So there you go. That's today's sponsor. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring me. This is my first sponsorship. So thank you for fueling these videos and keeping them alive. Now let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so this is the animation that we're going to be tackling. It's rendered in cycles. Cycles is a must for this one because we are going to be using some glass and some roughness fun to get that effect you're seeing. So we will be rendering in cycles. You can't get this look in Eevee. If you want to get the scene file that you're seeing right here, you can get that in the description on Gumroad for a dollar. But we're going to be going through this, and everybody on Patreon will be getting this file for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you can go check it out in the description. So let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we're going to be staying in the Cycles engine like I stated. So go to the camera icon and switch it to Cycles if you are in Eevee. So I'm going to go in and just pop in any kind of text I would like to use. So the standard sort of logo kind of idea, I'm just going to use a simple E. So we're going to center everything here in the text uh, section and we'll just put E. There you go. E. There he is. So this is the E we're going to be working with. I can add some thickness if I want, but I think I'm just going to leave it here just to show you guys how to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to the shading tab and start shading this guy. So I'm just going to go and click on rendered view. I'm going to click new and I'm going to go to a mix shader. So click on the mix shader right here. So I'm going to go to a mix shader, M I X. Put him right there for now. I'm going to delete this principle and we're going to plug the mix into the surface input and we're going to add an emission shader just right here and a transparent. Just like that and we'll just plug the transparent here to the top and the emission here to the bottom. We'll just swap those out for organization. Now if you click on rendered view he does have some light now. You can bring it back to black if you want. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pick the color you want to use. So I'm going to go with this nice orange. I'm going to give it a strength of 40. So now he is nice, big, and bright. So let's go ahead and start designing him and use this factor output right here. So first off, of course, always we got to get a color ramp to start things off with. Add the color ramp. Now let's get a brick texture and plug that in right there. And now we have bricks. Um, but we, we're not done there. We are going to take the, motor si the mortar size. In a previous tutorial, I said motor size and string fairy. He corrected me. It is mortar. I can't read. <laughs> mortar size, zero. So now we just have some subtle bricks. But I want to sort of mess with those. But first off, let's just bring this color ramp in so we can kind of see what's going on. As you can see, the transparent node is working because now we can see through the object. But let's just bring that there for now. Now, let's go ahead and if we have, if you have the node wrangler, add-on enabled, control T, gives you a mapping node and a texture coordinate. I'm going to be using the object coordinate here right over there, bam. So you just need a mapping and a texture coordinate. So now let's go to the vector line here, here in the texture coordinate, and let's go ahead and add a Voronoi. And plug that right there. Now we get some crazy stuff, cool design, kind of fun, but I don't want it to look like that. So I'm going to add a mix RGB so we can tell it how much of that to use. And let's take this object coordinate and plug it into color 2. And by doing that, you can tell it how much to use. I'm going to just hop over to EV so we can see this a little better. I mean, my computer can run a little easier on this. So now we have this design. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it to cells. On distance, change it to Mikowski so we get, we're get we going to get some cool stuff. I'm actually switch back, switch back to cycles. It looks different in EV and cycles, just slightly. Um, so we're just going to keep it here. It's not running my computer too much. So on exponent, give it 0.2. To really get that crazy looking stuff, if we go like 0.1, it's super sharp and super cool. And then on the scale, I'm going to keep it at 5. So now we have this cool thing. And of course, you can tell how much of that to use. 
so we can start making our bricks look kind of cool on the brick size um let's keep it at five as well i think we're good with everything here so you can start seeing how it looks with that i'm a big fan of that so now let's start playing with our glass so let's just go ahead and add in a plane i'm gonna go back to the layout here and let's bring it up right here and let's go ahead and on the size here let's give it 16 by 9 that is standard video size so now let's go ahead and go to the top here by hitting the tilde key we're gonna add our camera and control alt 0 snap it to view now we have this and we can scale them down by by right about that much and then we can bring our camera in and there we go so so the first thing we need to do is add just the default shader, default principled, and we bring the transmission, bring it all the way up, bam, now you have glass. And we have that cool fall off, kind of looks blurry. So in the world settings, let's just go ahead and make it black. So now we have this, now let's play with that roughness. So let's go back to shading, and I'm gonna go to, go to look dev here in Eevee, so we just have the glass, and all we're gonna do is play with the roughness. So let's add a color ramp, plug that into the roughness, and we're gonna add a Voronoi. So, VO, and we get the Voronoi texture, plug that in, and you'll see it start to change already. Now you can see some roughness fun happening, but we're going to go switch it to cells, and we're going to, and let's go ahead and hit Control T on this as well, and switch it to the object coordinate, so everything is nice and even, and I'm going to hit Control A and apply scale. So, let's change distance to... I believe it is Makowski. Yep. And give it 0 0.1 on the exponent. So we also get that crazy shading. It's going to give a nice cohesive design. So now, if you want to check out how it looks in cycles, now we have this. And if it's too blurry for you, if you don't want it that much, you can play with the colors of it. See if we bring the black all the way up, it is completely rough. So let's bring the black all the way down and play with the white portions just to give it some subtlety. Give it just subtly mess with it. So keep it mostly white, just like that. So now we have the look. Now let's go ahead and animate it. First off, I want to bring my camera in some because I think the E is just too small and that's not good for composition. So now the E is a nice size and a nice brightness. So all we have to do to animate this I'm going to pop down here. Actually, I'm going to hit H to hide that so I can actually see how the animation is looking and I'm not overrunning my computer. So let's animate it. So first off, just bring up the timeline here in the shader editor and bam, you have a timeline. So let's bring it back down to zero. This is how it animates basically. So just start it right when the orange starts going. I'm going to right click and hit insert keyframe. One, two, three, four, about a four second animation. It looks about 40 frames and bring it all the way to the end. It's right about there. And insert keyframe. So if we watch it, that is our animation. Now it's, of course, it cycles. We can't, it's not a real time, so it's not going to be that jumpy. So now let's just go back into our glass here and do it again. Now, whenever we render it, it will be nice and smooth. If you look at the original animation, this is how it's going to look. Go back to the beginning here. So it's going to look like that. It's going to be nice and smooth and nice and warm and all that. So that's how it's going to look when we animate it. And if you make it slower, it'll be a more gradual, nice animation. So we have this here, kind of noisy. And if you saw in my render, it's also noisy. I preferred it to look noisy. It adds some grunge to it, more sci-fi looking. If you want it to be clean, you would use denoising and things like that. So if you want it to be grungy and interesting, you can just play around with your render settings. I'm going to keep it at 128. And then you can, of course, add denoising, bring the strength all the way up or whatever. But being that I didn't use denoising, I wouldn't know what settings to direct you to. But Blender has great defaults, so I would just leave it at the default. But I t kept it off. And you can play with these samples, but I'm going to keep it at 128, and I'm going to hit render. Now, just to show you how to export it, you would click this little this little folder to show where you want to save it. PNG, switch to FFmpeg video, and then right here. So you would do that right here, FFmpeg on encoding, change it to MP4, and then on medium quality, perceptually lossless, and you're ready to render, render, render animation. So there you go. That's another animation for you guys. Hope you learned something. I hope you had some fun, and thanks for watching.